Astronomers and astrophysicists have come a long way toward understanding how stars operate, to the point where we can even predict how long it will be before our sun runs out of fuel and transforms into a red giant. Stars are some of the most beautiful and awe-inspiring objects in the universe. Through violent thermonuclear reactions, they emit enormous amounts of light, illuminating the night sky and heating up any nearby planets in the process. Through mergers and powerful explosions, stars are also responsible for producing the heavy elements that make up much of the matter we see around us. But today, we're not just going to talk about the types of stars we're familiar with. Instead, we're going to contemplate stars we've never seen before, ones that astrophysicists say could hypothetically exist, including ones that are quite literally made of vacuum. Let's tell you all the details about it in this video. Before we start, I will request you to hit the subscribe button for more updates on space-related subjects. First, we need to lay some groundwork and understand how stars work in general, starting with the most important star of all, the Sun. Since the Sun is made of gas and not solid matter, you couldn't stand on its surface like you would on the Earth. The Sun's gravity would just pull you down toward the center. So why doesn't the gas at the surface get pulled inwards too? It turns out that there is a pressure pushing outward from the Sun's core that counterbalances this pull of gravity. The main source of this pressure is the radiation created by fusion reactions in the core, the same radiation responsible for carrying light and heat from the Sun to the Earth. Whether you think of radiation as individual photons or waves in the electromagnetic field, its path from the core toward the outer layers of the Sun will cause an outward push in all directions. This radiation pressure wouldn't be enough to stop you from falling into the Sun, but it's just enough to stop the sun's own gas from collapsing in on itself. This balancing act between inward pulling gravity and outward pushing pressure is a feature of pretty much all known types of stars. What differentiates different types of stars is where that pressure comes from. For our sun, the pressure comes from fusing hydrogen into helium. When the sun runs out of hydrogen in about five billion years, it will become a red giant star whose pressure comes from fusing helium into even heavier nuclei. Eventually, the sun will also run out of helium and any other light elements that could be used as fuel for nuclear fusion. At that point, it will collapse into a small star known as a white dwarf. Since no more fusion is occurring anymore, white dwarfs are sometimes called stellar remnants instead of stars. But if there's no more fusion, where does the pressure to support these stellar remnants come from? It turns out that gravity pulls the gas of a white dwarf inward until it's so dense that a new type of pressure emerges, known as electron degeneracy pressure. This is a purely quantum mechanical effect, and it's the same effect that's responsible for you not being able to pass your hand through solid objects. Electrons simply cannot get too close to each other without an extraordinary amount of energy. But some stellar remnants are so massive that even electron degeneracy pressure isn't strong enough to counteract the pull of gravity. This is called the Chandrasekhar limit. It's absolutely impossible to have a stable white dwarf any heavier than 1.4 times the mass of the sun. If a star has burned through all its nuclear fuel and its core is still heavier than the Chandrasekhar limit, that core will collapse in on itself until it becomes so dense that an even stronger type of quantum pressure emerges, known as neutron degeneracy pressure, which, as you may have guessed, prevents neutrons from getting too close to each other. A star that reaches this state is called a neutron star, the smallest and densest known class of stellar objects. So now you might be wondering, is there a maximum mass that a neutron star can have while still being supported by neutron degeneracy pressure? And there is. This time, 
it's about 2.2 times the mass of the Sun. Any heavier than that, and the neutron star would keep collapsing under the influence of its own gravity until... Well, actually, not until anything. As far as we know, neutron degeneracy pressure is the strongest possible pressure that ordinary matter can exert. So there's nothing left to prevent a sufficiently heavy stellar remnant from collapsing in on itself forever. This is the fate that might await some of the most massive stars we've observed in the universe. From the perspective of an outside observer, these stars would get so dense that all we'd be able to see is a black hole. But then, scientists started to wonder. What would happen to a star that wasn't made of ordinary matter? If exotic forms of matter could hypothetically produce even larger pressures than neutron degeneracy pressure, then what new kinds of stars could exist? You might think that we could just continue the pattern that we were starting to see earlier. Stars could get even smaller and even denser than neutron stars, as long as they were supported by some even greater pressure. You might think that the only limit on how small these stars could get would be the point of no return where they would turn into black holes. That point of no return is when a star becomes smaller than its own Schwarzschild radius. This is almost true, but not quite. Instead, physicist Hans Adolf Buchdahl showed in 1959 that a star made of any realistic form of matter with positive energy density and pressure can't be smaller than nine, eight times its Schwarzschild radius. It might not sound like a big difference, but that factor of nine, eight means that any realistic star has to be noticeably larger than a black hole, making it much easier to tell them apart. That's when physicists began asking about stars that Buchdahl would call less realistic. For example, what if a star was made of matter that allows for pressure to be negative in some regions and positive in others? Then Buchdahl's limit wouldn't apply, and that star could be less than nine, eight times its Schwarzschild radius. In fact, it could be arbitrarily close to the size of a black hole with the same mass. As a side note, theoretical stars like these that could mimic the appearance of black holes came to be quite a nuisance for astrophysicists, since now every time they discovered something they thought was a black hole, they couldn't just say they discovered a black hole. They had to qualify that it's either a black hole or an extremely compact object, mimicking a black hole, even though in their hearts, most of them are quite convinced that it's a black hole. What are your thoughts on this? Share your insights in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications by pressing the bell icon so you never miss a captivating moment of discovery.